Hi, I'm Kathy. Welcome to a bit of Christmas crafting with Kathy. In today's clip, we're going to be doing some loose water coloring, but using inks as our media, our stamping inks as our medium for coloring. We're going to be using some, the Eclectic Images Tiddly Tree, which is a bit of a favorite and it's brilliant for coloring. So we're going to be creating some soft background color and some real strong color on the tree. So let's show you our stamps. We have got our Tiddly Tree. We've got Peace on Earth and a bit of another old favorite, Sketch Swirl. And with our inks, we're going to be working with some Catherine Pooler ones in the Spa collection. We've got some Rose Petals and Sangria, uh, Daydream, Seafoam and Juniper Mist. We'll start off, we've got our card already cut and I'm going to stamp and emboss our Peace on Earth and our Tiddly Tree in white. So let's ink them up with our Versamark pad. Because I'm using Cotton Blend cardstock, I will stamp and emboss um, I'll stop to emboss each one. I won't do them both together because the ink will dry a little bit quicker on this cardstock. If I was doing it on a glossy surface or something, I could probably stamp both and then emboss them. But this time we're just going to get that embossing powder on. Open out my little bit of sketching paper there. Grab a little brush, give it a bit of a tap. And tap on the back. Now, because I'm about to use that again, I don't need to put the powder back in straight away. I'm just checking to make sure that I haven't got bits where I don't want them. Because we're going to be doing a lot of colouring around the images, it would really show if I actually had little white dots where I don't want them. Okay, let's grab our other stamp, which is the Tiddly Tree. Bring that one into shot and ink up our tree. I've got the card upside down, haven't I? So I better put the stamp on upside down as well. Okay, nice press down. And I haven't stopped to heat the piece on earth, so I've got to make sure that I don't accidentally touch that. Let's get our embossing powder on there. Grab my brush, tap it down. Make sure we've covered the whole tree image good thumbs on the back and then have a bit of a look at it and I can see I must have had a bit of a fingerprint there just pick up on a few bits that I'm not happy with okay now we can put the excess powder back into our tub now for any of you are thinking that this is a good idea to have your embossing powder in a bigger tub yes it is but not this size, <laughs> go a bigger one. You need something that your card fits over the top of so you can shake it directly down in there. All you end up with this one is a area where the powder gets all over the edge of it and I've still got to use my scrap paper to catch excess powder. So yes, either stick with them in their small jars or go a bigger one. Okay, let's get this heated. Now with the background that we're going to do today, I've actually got a bit of card that was left over from one of our briaring tutorials. And it's just got a little bit of card. It's just where I was cleaning off the briar onto some card. So I'm going to use that and spritz it with water and play around with it and make ourselves a backing card. I'm just waiting and watching. Now white is very sensitive to overheating. So as soon as that goes smooth, I need to move on to the next bit. Tiddly Tree is such a good one for colouring with watercolour effects because it's a whole image. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <coughs> Just choking on absolutely nothing. It's just a excuse for a bit of cuppa, isn't it? Okay, let's see how we go. So that's got that whole tree embossed in white. And of course, it doesn't look like anything at the moment. Let's bring in our background piece. So this was where we were just cleaning our brayer off on a bit of scrap card. I've also got some gorgeous Perfect Pearls Mist Spray that I've made up. <coughs> I'm gonna keep coughing, I think. So we're gonna give our card a spritz with this. 
and just see if it does enough, whether we've got enough ink on there to actually create some good effects or if we need to add a bit more ink. Let it sit there for a moment and then grab a piece of paper towel. And as I pop this over, it's gonna lift bits of ink off and create some interesting patterns in it. And plus, because we use the Perfect Pearl Mist, it's now got a lovely sheen to it. So let's pop that to one side and let it do its job while I start coloring in our tiddly tree. Oh, no, I lied. I'm going to spritz this one with pearl as well. Now, normally I do my coloring and then I give it a spritz. But with this one, I don't want to, once I've colored this tree in the rich colors, I don't want to then spritz over it and get dots in it and take away from it. But I still want a metallic shine on the card. So let's give it a spritz before we start doing our coloring. Which means, of course, we've got to let that one sit and dry now. Okay, let's go back and play with our background bit. Oh, Matthew, I did, I did sort of work this one out beforehand. Now, how's that going to look? with our other card over the top. Just very careful because it's wet. I think that's enough background color. We might just add a little bit more sangria and a bit more turquoise around it. So let's give it a little bit of a heat set. So I get the noisy old heat gun going. While that's happening, I will reach around and grab some brushes that I'm going to need. One for that and one for sangria. Okay, we'll flip that over and give it a bit of a dry from the back. You can see I used it several times as a bit of um, cleaning off paper. Hard. Give him a bit of a smooth. Okay, let's get some sangria around some of the edges. This is a great colour sangria. I'm actually really looking forward to um, there's two new colours from the Catherine Pooler inks, um, Deck the Halls and uh, Cranberry Fizz. So a really good Christmassy red and Christmassy green, which they're in the party collection, so they'll be strong colours. But I think they'll work well, judging by what I've seen of them, I think they'll work rather well both with the Party Collection and the Spa Collection inks. So I'm looking forward to receiving my order and having a play with those. Well, we'll pop them up on the website as soon as I've got the stock in. Now I'm going to add a bit of stamping over this and this is where I'll use the sketch swirl. And I think because we've done that one half in one color and one half in the other color, I should do the same with the sketch swirl. So let's find it and ink it up. That's one stamp that I hadn't got out ready, but it is sitting in our box of texture stamps, sitting here waiting for me. There we go. Let's pop him onto an acrylic block. And I've got the Daydream open, so that's the one we'll start off with. Remember, with Catherine Puller inks, just a light touch is plenty. If you think, oh, I can't imagine that's enough ink, just test it off on your scrap and you go, well, it is. Okay, let's do some stamping around the edge. Remember, rotate your stamp around a bit so you get different parts of the swirl showing. And keep in mind, we're only going to be seeing the outer border. So I'm letting one swirl come into the sangria area. So we'll overlap that little bit. Now, two strong colors, so I'm going to stop and give it a bit of a clean in between. Matthew's very quick on the switching today. I was trying to dive out a shot and he keeps keeping up with me. That's why you pay me the big buck. <laughs> right. Sausage rolls and slice. I want a little bit curling into the daydream area. Isn't it just such a great color? Well, both these are great colors. Excellent, so that's our background piece. 
pretty yummy. Give our poor old skip swirl a bit of a clean and let's have a look at how our teddy tree is drying. We might give it just a little bit of a dry with the heat gun. Now my plan for this card is to do some soft water colouring around the piece on earth and also around the tree and then some stronger colouring inside the tree. So using complementary colours but using the different tones of them to create the effect we want to want. Let's just do a little bit of a dab over that. That's looking wonderful and dry. So I can grab my water brush, make sure I've got a little bit of water flowing and I will just reach over and grab a broader one, the filbert one. So now the inks that we're going to use, I'll move my acrylic block into place here. I could do it on my craft mat, but I tend to be moving around a bit. So I often like to do it on a block where I know where my colors are. So I'll put some of the, what's this one I'm using? Rose petals and some of the skylight, which are the two softer colors. And of course you still can't even see where that lettering is. What we're going to do is start with some rose petals and just, if I go over the edges, it's not going to matter because I'm going to be doing the darker colour inside the design. So we're putting some there and then we're just using our filbert brush just to spread that a bit. So it almost spreads out into nothing actually, that's what I'm aiming for. Now there's a bit of a gap between the star and the top of the tree, so we need to include that. So you can see once we start getting some colour on, the white embossing will start to start to stand out, it starts to pop. So if I need to just clean that brush and just touch everything with some more water, just keep that moving until it really blends out into almost nothing. Another quick sip of tea. That's what happens when Matthew makes me a lovely hot cuppa just before we start filming. Okay, let's get the filbert brush and push some clean water into all that. Let it smudge out. So you don't want to colour too far and have the inks dry before you get a chance to smooshy them out. If you feel you're getting too much colour, you can always grab your bit of paper towel and just take it back a little bit if you need to. I'm just checking to make sure I'm getting into the creases between the tree there. So facing the card in such a way that I can get the end of the little of the, the medium brush right into all those crevices where we need it to go. Then come in with our filbert brush. The broad brush would work fine for this as well. And just scruff some water in there. And I'm hoping that we're still going to be seeing, yes we are. If you look at it across the light, we still get some of our perfect pearls shining through that ink, which is great. I wonder who's flying overhead. <laughs> That's one thing you have no control over when you're doing things like filming. What is going to happen outside the window? Okay, now we'll switch. To, I'll just give my brush a bit of a clean on my scrap paper. Just wiping it back and forwards. So I don't need to stop and wash it. And we'll switch to the uh, skylight colour. Now there is, you'll notice as it appears, once the, the white embossing starts to appear, you'll notice that there is some extra little sketchy lines around the tree. So you've got to be a bit careful that you're not mistaking that for the design and only putting your colour 
outside those bits. So it might be one where until you get used to this design, it's good to have the picture that's on the label near you so you can see how the pattern of it goes. But again, as I said, if you get some over into the tree shape itself, for this particular card, that's fine because we're going to be using darker colours within the tree. Just. So I'm, I've got quite a bit cat, um, leaking into the tree there. That's fine. If I was doing this the other way around and putting the darker colours on the outside, of course I would have to be more careful. Um, I would probably still, I think to still do it first would be a good idea because that way you can pick up on any mistakes, fix any mistakes when you're doing the tree. Now, if we had time, I would like to actually, when I finish this, check how the background's looking and maybe give it another light spritz with the metallic but then we'd have to wait for it to dry again. So I'm not going to do that today, but probably if I was doing this card for myself, I would give it another spritz and then put it to one side. This is quite a nice card to make if you're having to do, not having to, if you're choosing to do a lot of Christmas cards. Um, it's a fairly easy one to emboss a few ahead and then just sit down on another night and do all your watercoloring. Just make sure we've got the little pot there. And then our piece on earth, I'm going to do that with the colour going through the letters. But let's do a bit of the skylight, then we'll do some rose petals, and then we'll come back to skylight. So we'll have it, rather than just doing two colours like that, we'll have it a bit more patchy. But remember, don't let it dry before you come back in and do your, your softening out. Now we're actually working on the 300 GSM cotton blend card here this time, which means I've got a lot more water that ability to use water on it and to blend it without the card buckling. The 300 GSM is very good for blending techniques when you're using quite a bit of water and also for die cutting from, especially if you're going to be doing the die cutting where you then um, do layers of embossing powder over it or something like that. And having the stronger card for your die cut is really good. And a bit on the end there. Smooshing it with our filbert brush. Trying to make sure that I haven't got too many hard edges. I want it really soft. Sometimes it's nice to have the edges that watercolour forms, but sometimes it's nice to have it blended out. So let's go back to piece. So you see, once we get those colours around, suddenly that white embossing starts to pop out. Now, if I find that this isn't showing up enough, I might be able to come, I, well, not might, I'll come in with the stronger colours and add some more definite shadows to the letters. Turn it round so you can get the end of the brush right in where you need it. And a little bit more down here. Not quite enough, I'm not seeing the bottom of the letters there. They're just adding a bit more colour. I think they are going to need a little bit more. We're not standing out quite enough. So we will add a bit more in there as we go. but you can see the effect that you get with using the watercolour around the white. 
Okay, let's get into our richer colours now. So that's the Sangria and the Daydream. And I reckon we're going to go some Juniper Mist as well. So let's add a bit of Juniper Mist. You're using such, I mean, you're just touching the ink pad to the palette and that's plenty of colour to do our colouring. It's amazing how little ink you actually need. So to do this loose water colouring style, I want to actually pull a bit of water on first. Then I'll add the colour in and let it just do its thing. So then I'm going to pick up my next colour. Let's put some water down. And just dab the colour on. Sometimes you've got to tease it out a little bit, particularly where you've got the two colours blending. But the idea is to not play too much, which is really hard because you want to keep playing with it. Okay, let's just clean the brush, add a bit more water in there. I have to admit this technique is a bit easier to do if you, st if you emboss it with a gold or a black or something where you can see the edges of the tree a little bit easier but I really wanted to get the effect of the white. So I'm making life difficult for myself, but enjoying the effect that it's creating. Now see how that blue is leaching into the water even before I put other colors on. So then when they meet, they should just blend beautifully for me. Let's just pull a bit of water in there. You don't want it so wet that it's going to run outside of the image, but you want it wet enough that these colours will mush in together. In fact, I'm going to add some juniper mist at the end of those branches. If you've got too much water, it could actually bleach out the colours a bit. We need a bit more colour going into there. So a little bit more squeeze of water as I do those ones and get those ones all blending together. Uh, now I'm just playing too much. We're going to run into problems with time with this one because I'm too busy playing. Lay down some water first. See it start to run. Now if you don't have these colours, you can get a similar look with the Royal Satin Collider colour pad. It has some very similar colours. Of course you can mix it up with whatever colours you like. Okay, let's go with some daydream all across that one. Oh, it's just beautiful when it just hits the water and just sort of explodes. Let's touch a bit of the colours together. And let's just see if our tree's balanced. I think we need a little bit more daydream going into, or maybe a little bit of juniper mist going into the sangria there. So I'm just adding a bit and just dabbing, just sort of teasing the colours together to get them to run. We're just colouring our little pot. I haven't coloured in the star. I was just going to put some gold on that, but I might just add a little bit of a darker colour as a backing, just so we see the embossing showing up with the shape of the star. And then I'll just put some gold glitter over the top of the actual star bit. Now, you can see I don't think those letters down below are showing up at all well. 
So let's come in and add maybe some of the juniper mist and add some extra shadows around nice and close to the letters. So I'm going to use my filbert brush again, but this time I'm having not too much water on and I just want to soften that shadow a bit, but without blending it out like I did before. Let's just soften it. So keeping it closer to the letters, but we don't have time to do accurate shadowing around the whole lot. So we just dab some color on, but not blend it out over the top of our lovely pastel colors that we've got there. So a little bit of softening. It just helps just to spin your card around a bit. Then we're going to want to quickly get this one layered onto our other background card. You can see those letters starting to pop now that we get a little bit of darker around them. Okay. So where's our background piece? There's our background piece looking stunning. And let's give this a very quick little go over with our heat gun just to dry it a bit. Some double sided tape on the back. I'm just going to move over from where I've got the card a bit wet, my, sorry my backing paper a bit wet because I don't want to smudge out the beautiful work that we've just done. Grab a little block because I find that's much quicker than trying to just tear the tape and it gives me a lovely neat edge. And one down the middle, even though we've used 300 GSM, it could still be a little bit buckly just from the water. So we'll just add an extra bit of tape down the middle there. Okay, very quickly peel all these bits up. I do sometimes find if I haven't pressed the tape down enough, it's actually harder to get the edge up. So sometimes you just got to take a moment and just press it down first. And I'll have to check that bit and make sure I didn't go over the edge too much. I think I did on the side, so just on the side I'm just going to push that bit of tape in and on the end there, make sure I haven't got sticky bits where I don't want them. Let's have a look at our how we fit on our backing card. And pop it down. Now somehow I've managed to pick up, there must have been a bit of something wet and I've picked up a bit of a smudge there. So I'm just going to get my filbert brush and just try and scruff that out a little bit. Maybe it was a fingerprint. Okay. So I think I'd still like to come back and just darken those a bit, but that's not a job for today. Let's grab some of our glisten stickles and we're going to pick up on the star. So the stickles wouldn't have given us the shape of the star, whereas putting that little bit of blue ink underneath does. And I just want to add a few little like Christmas lights around the tree. Okay, switch to a bit of gold. No, we're just going to leave it like that. I'll fill those in later because we're running out of time. So I'll just move that down if Matthew's with me. There we go. Move it onto the black so we can get a really good picture of it so you can see the lovely loose watercolour effect as well as the soft background watercolour effect all got with our inks. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that one. Who doesn't love a bit of watercolouring? And I hope you have a go at that one with some of your Christmas stamps too. Try it with the white embossing, try it with the gold, you'll get some great effects. Okay, thank you for being with us and we'll see you again next time.